few months back, I had a nice blue dial mechanical field watch from Timex that cost me $229. It was a fairly good watch overall for the price, but I did have a few concerns with it. In this video, we have a similar mechanical field watch from Timex that is improved in a number of ways, and it only costs $30 more than the previous model. I'm going to highlight some of these improvements and let you be the judge as to which is the better field watch from Timex. One of my biggest concerns with the previous field watch I had was the unknown Chinese movement found inside. And unfortunately, to my dismay, this new watch contains basically the same internals, so there's no real improvements in this category. I really think Timex could upgrade this watch in a big way by putting a Miyota handwind movement here, like the 8N33. After all, Timex is known to use Miyota movements in other watches that they produce, and I think Miyota carries a little more reliability than some unknown Chinese movement. Okay, so leaving the movement issue behind, what are some of the improvements that I see in this watch? The first improvement, I think, is the hands. Now, I understand that not all of you care as much as I do about this, but the handset on the blue model that I had was way too short. I'm talking about the minute and second hand specifically. And I'm happy to report that the hands on this new model are a perfect length and reach out to a good spot on the dial. The blue model did have syringe hands, which I didn't mind at all, uh, but the hands on this new model, I think, fit the design very well. Another improvement that I see is that this watch comes on a bracelet. I am personally a bracelet guy in general and always try and buy a watch with a bracelet if possible. You can always change out the bracelet and put a nice strap on later if you so choose. Having said that, this bracelet isn't much to write home about. You have hollow links, hollow end links, push pins, and a pressed clasp, and the finish is worn when you move the links. I do like the locking mechanism that is here, and I like how it is flush with the rest of the bracelet. Although the bracelet has its issues, I'm still glad I have that option. A final improvement I see here is with the dial. This is minor and very subjective, I do admit, but I like this dial better than the other watch I had, even though the differences are small. The main difference is the triangle at the 12 o'clock rather than the numeral, which I think I like a little bit better. Then the pips on the outside of the dial are also different. Overall, I think this dial is done very nicely. It's clean, it's simple. I like that matte black color, and the faux Tina colored markers look great as well. The loom on this watch isn't Seiko potent, but it does the job as you can see. As far as dimensions go, they are identical to the previous model I had. There is a 38 millimeter case diameter, a 10.4 millimeter case thickness, a 46.6 millimeter lug to lug and a 20 millimeter lug width. This watch features a flat sapphire crystal and 100 meters of water resistance. So this review was a little bit different than normal as we noticed some differences between Timex's previous field watch that I reviewed and then this new one. Let me know if you think the differences I mentioned were improvements like I thought they were or just simply differences. I really like the size of this watch and I think it has a cool tactical vibe to it. But you guys let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. This model will be linked in the description as well as the old model if you're interested in either one of them. Also I hope that you'll hit the like button on this video as it helps out the channel and helps it get in front of more people. But thanks so much for tuning into the Town Watch today. We'll see you next time.